Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, we're going to take a look at something that's been on everyone's mouth for the last couple of months, which is, of course, AI technology. So I'm going to show you a technique that I've been playing around with for the past couple of weeks that I think it's very, very useful. Before we jump onto the technique, I'm just going to give my quick opinion about AI. AI is a really powerful tool, but we do need to try to be as ethical as possible when using it so that we don't hurt or affect any other artists. So I think when using AI in a way that a allows us to, to just like make our lives easier is a good way to implement that too. So this right here is a mid journey prompt that I did for cobblestone. Very typical thing if you're doing like a ground, like I don't know, some sort of like a floor, medieval floor or something like that, you're probably gonna need some cobblestone, right? So this is the basic like prompt that I got. The only thing that's different is that you need to add the tile flag so that it knows that it needs to tile on every single side. And then I picked my favorite one, which is this one right here. So this cobblestone texture, as you can see, looks really nice, really realistic, but there's one little problem and that's the size. The size of this tool is not as good. So I'm gonna show you the first AI tool that you can use to make this a little bit better before we make our own smart material out of it. So I'm gonna jump straight into Photoshop and here instead of Photoshop in the, I would say last couple of versions, they added something called neural filters. I've talked about them before and um, I'm gonna talk about some of them right now, which are, they're, they're quite excellent. Like uh, I, I was uh, telling uh, a little cousin that wanted to make some money is like, hey, just download Photoshop and use the like uh, AI restoration thing and you could get some like nice little like uh, cash flow here and there. So this is our image. And if we go to image, image size, you're gonna see that it's only 1024 by 1024. So what I wanna do is I wanna have at least a 2K texture out of this thing. However, we know that if I were to, let's say, create a 20 or a 2K texture right here, and I just like drag and drop this over here and press control T to make it bigger, I mean, that could work, but unfortunately we are gonna lose a lot of detail. It's gonna look a little bit pixelated. And even though we could extract information from this, it's not gonna be as ideal. Remember that a 2K texture converted to a 4K map is four times as big. It's not twice as big as four times, it's exponential growth. So over here, I'm gonna go to filter, neural filters, and neural filters, neural filters are this AI things that we can use. They're not as strong right now as Mid Journey. However, they are adding something like that soon to, to Photoshop. Um, and we have this one called super zoom. So I'm just gonna click and turn this on and I'm gonna super zoom this to twice the distance. There you go. So once we have that, we can of course use this remove JPEG artifacts to clean the image a little bit and we hit okay. What's gonna happen is now we have this 2K image that should keep the detail a lot closer. Yes, it's gonna incorporate a little bit of noise and things like that, but it should give us a generally good result in our, um, in our textures. So I'm gonna save this texture right here. Yeah, let's save this as a, oh, let's save this as a JPEG. I'm gonna save it on the desktop for now. That's all of my thumbnails and go, we're gonna call this cobblestone. So that was the first AI tool that we're using, super zoom to make an image bigger. It's also a great tool if you are working for a client and they send you a logo or an image or a photo that you need to use and you need to make it really, really big. That's a great way to, to um, well, to make it bigger. Uh, we don't need to save right now. And now we're gonna go to the magical place, which is a substance sampler. This is a little software. Not a lot of people know about it, even though you might have gotten like Substance Painter. If you have access to Substance Painter as a student, you should have access to Substance 3D Sampler as well. So I'm just gonna go here, create new. And over in this side on the layers, I'm gonna create a new material out of my cobblestone right here. I'm gonna hit open. And this is all I need to do. Image to material, AI powered. There you go. AI is not bad. As long as you know and you use it in an ethical way, AI is a great, great tool to make our lives, our lives so much easier. So I'm just going to let this thing run. And as you can see, in just a couple of seconds, we're going to get a very nice like detail of how we would expect to see this material right here. Look at this. <laughs> it's just amazing, right? Like we get a normal map. We get roughness map. Okay. We get metallic. In this case, there's no metallic. We get height information for displacement map. We get an ambient occlusion to make things a little bit like more intense. So in general, it's a really, really cool thing. Now you can change things a little bit over here. For instance, I feel like the roughness map is a little bit too like flat. There's not a lot of variation between the different um, like the colors. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna add a layer and I'm gonna add a, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's try something like a levels or something like that. Where is it? 
do we have a levels or like a curves? No. Mm. Let's try a little bit brightness and contrast. There we go. So on the brightness and contrast things, I'm going to change the input channel so that it only affects the roughness map. And now I can play around with this thing. And as you can see, make the floor, for instance, a little bit wetter. So instead of having a very like uh, like flat, like non shiny floor, we can play around with the brightness. And of course, the, the darker things get, the shinier they're going to be. In this case, I'm going to keep it relatively simple, something like this. And we can increase the contrast, which is going to like make the difference between the, the in this case, the the wet points and the the nut or the what would be the dry points a little bit less intense there we go so that's definitely way way too much so i'm gonna push this up a little bit but as you can see we can generate a very very nice material there's a lot more layers that you can play around with here in straight inside the 3d sampler you can even add like new things for instance uh there's like this uh, i don't know like cracks right so i can add a cracks layer and look at that it's a it's a procedurally generated crack node right there um i do think that it's a little bit too intense so for instance, we can go to advanced parameters and the height range, which is like the intensity. Actually, no, this is the oh, normal intensity. There we go. We're going to bring the normal intensity down. So look at that. Now we have a cracked like cobblestone texture that's going to look very, very nice once we bring this into our, uh, what's the worth, into our final like uh, software. We're going to be rendering this inside of Blender. Sorry, I blanked out right there. So, okay, cool. We got our, uh, we created our like completely fake AI generated image. We super sample it to get more uh, like elements. Now we've generated a smart material. How do we bring this smart material or how do we use this smart material for other things? There's two ways you can do it. First, we're gonna go here to share. I'm gonna export this as, and on the material settings, you can decide which kind of file you wanna create. I could, for instance, create an SBSR file. Actually, I'm gonna create the SBSR file. And if you guys want this material, make sure to check the Discord channel and I'm gonna have that in, um, we're probably gonna have to create like a resource folder or something. So this material is gonna be available within our Discord. Make sure to check it down here in case you wanna use it in your projects. Now over here on the channels, I do wanna export the base color, the normal, the roughness, the metallic, and the height, and also the ambient dilution. Those are usually the, the maps that we export with our element. We could export this cracks mask, but I don't think we really need it right now. So we can export. And uh, this thing is gonna be exporting our material, as you can see right there. So now this material, if you're using Maya and you're using the, like, um, what's the word? The Substance plugin, you can just like plug it in and that's it. But let's say we're doing other things like not, not old school things, but other other processes where we need the actual maps of our element. If we need the actual maps of our element, the only thing we need to do here is export as and on the material settings, change this to any type of uh, like a element like JPEG, for instance, right here. The only thing I don't like about JPEG is that for height information, it would be better if we could have an EXR because EXR is usually a little bit better. However, EXR for everything else might be a little bit too much. Um, however, you can you can use it if you want. So I'm gonna export JPEG without the height information. I'm gonna hit export. You can see that all of these guys are being exported, I think, to the desktop. There we go. So ambient occlusion, base color, metallic. We don't need the metallic map. There's no information. Normal map and roughness. And now we need to, or we can go back here to export as and change this to EXR and grab our hide information. And hit export. So now if we take a look at this, you're going to see that the height information, which again is, is good for the displacement, is going to be available for us right here. If you want to know a little bit more about displacement, we just released a video, I think, yesterday. So make sure to check the little like uh, like alarm that's going to be over here. So yeah, now let's go to Blender. I'm going to go to Blender 3.6 in this case. And I'm going to create a plane, Shift A, Mesh, Plane. We're going to scale it up a little bit. And we're going to give it a lot of divisions. So let's go to edit mode and we're going to give it one, two, three. And then over here, let's do like four divisions there, four divisions there. When I keep it as symmetrical as possible, let's give it two divisions there and two divisions. there. That's good. That should be good. So now um, we need to create the material. So we're going to go over here, create a new material. We're going to call this M cobblestone. All of this, the, the setup for, for displacement is on the video that I just mentioned. So we're going to call this M cobblestone and we're going to go to shading. Now here, instead of shading, of course, we need to bring our uh, maps. So I'm going to bring, bring the base color, the ambient occlusion, the normal map and the roughness for now. 
And let's just build this very quickly. So as you can see, this is the color information. Color information goes into base color. Very simple setup right here. And then a normal information, we're going to need a special node called the Shift A normal map. So we press Shift A and we bring a normal map. There we go. So the color of the normal map goes into here. And this normal goes into this place right here. However, to make sure that this works properly, we need to change the sRGB to raw. This is very important. Otherwise, it's not going to look nice. Let's go over to the render engine, change to cycles, and I'm going to change this to GPU compute. And we can even go here to render. So there we go. We should be seeing a little bit of the normal map. And as you can see, it's right there looking nice. Then the roughness map, the roughness map, we also need to set this to raw. And this color is going to go into the roughness of our element. And as you can see now, the things that are supposed to be rough are going to be rough. And the things that are supposed to be a little bit shinier will be shiny. The ambient occlusion is a very interesting map because you don't really need it if you don't want to use it. But it's a good map to have. And what we can do here is we can do a mix RGB. So mix color. And what we're going to mix is we're going to mix the color of our element with our normal map. And the result of those mixes will give us a this. Right now, it's only mixing, as you can see. But if we change the mode to something like an overlay or like a multiply, we're going to get a darker sort of like shadow. Multiply is the ideal one because when you multiply against white, it, it just like goes away. And when you multiply against black, you get like a darker color on that area. So this is a traditional setup of any PBR material. Of course, we're missing the metallic channel. But since we don't have any metallic like object right now, it doesn't really matter. For the displacement, which we've, again, mentioned before, here's how you do it. You just press Shift A, and you're going to look for a displacement node, which is this one right here. And this one, interestingly enough, does not get connected to the main material. It gets connected to the shader right here. And to the displacement, we're going to connect, of course, the height information. So this height, this color right here, we're going to bring it into the height information. One more thing, on the shader itself, we need to go all the way down here. And under settings, we need to change displacement to displacement and bump. And now, as you can see, this thing is actually displacing the object. However, it's not displacing it properly. And the reason why it's not displacing it properly is because displacement needs a lot of resolution in order to work properly. So what we can do here is we can go to the modifiers of this plane, add a modifier. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier, and we just add more divisions. In this case, I think we're going to need something like six divisions, something like that. And of course, the scale of this particular displacement, we're going to lower it to like a 0.1 or something like that. Uh, point one starts looking good. I don't love the. I'm not sure if it's the normal map that's being like uh, creating or it's creating something weird. Let me disconnect it for just a second. So let's disconnect the normal map. No, it's not the normal map. Okay, let's keep the normal map right there. I'm not sure if it's the, due to the light that we have right now. We have a very like simple light. Uh, let's go back here to the shader. Let's instead of using bump, let's just use displacement. There we go. That looks way way better. And that's it. Now, again, we can play with the scale. Let's try 0 0.05, so it's not as intense. The cracks are definitely way, way, way too intense. I think they're they're kind of like breaking the, the sort of effect that I want. So very easy fix here. I'm just going to go back to the material. Let's go back to the cracks and just delete those. And we're going to export this again. Export, replace. And once it does that, if we um, like uh, delete this height map and bring it back, Let's go to desktop and internal material height. There we go. So now we don't have those cracks and it looks a lot better. So let's try 0.1. 0.1 was looking nice. It's a little bit too much. 0.08 I think is going to be a good number. And there we go. So with this, we've successfully created a very, very cool AI generated map, AI generated cobblestone that we could repeat like a ton of times. Like if I shift D and just like move this to the side. Right now, this is not tiling, right? This is a very like horrible way to tile things. But you can see how these guys like perfectly match each other on the rocks right here. Look at that. You can't even tell the well, that's a that's a little bit of a division right there. But you can see the whole material is tiling very, very nicely. So yeah, that's it, my friends. I hope you liked this video. Again, don't be scared of AI would be my suggestion. I know it's very scary to think that all of our jobs are going to go away, but it's it's not that. It's just that our jobs are going to change. That's a fact. They're going to change, and we're going to have to adapt to the new tools that are going to be available to us. But as you can see right here, we have a very, very cool thing that we can use to generate 
very interesting texture and super super fast so yeah that's it for this one my friends if you want to join if you want to learn a little bit more about blender we have a premium course available and we also have our discord channel a lot of shorts in all of our social medias so make sure to follow us leave us a like please subscribe we're really close to our goal i would really appreciate it and i'll be seeing you back on the next one Bye bye